<clears throat> All right, YouTube, what is going on today? My name is Dylan Hovey, and today we're going to play some Metamorphose Death Shadow. I saw a deck like this do pretty well at the, um, at, or Channel Fireball was playing um, Metamorphose in their Jun Shadow decks. <clears throat> so I wanted to try Metamorphose in a, um, in a, blue or in a five color version here to help kind of fix my mana kind of cool you can cast it through blood moon um so yeah i don't really have a whole lot on it yet just because i haven't tried it I've, i played one league with it actually i went four one in the league and it felt okay like it was kind of nice that it was free you know it acted like it just made your deck smaller which was pretty cool um but I'm not exactly sure if it's like good or not here. If I was going to, if I was going to play it without the Metamorphoses, I'd probably play like cut these, play another Liliana, another Fatal Push, and then another Land. But for now, we're going to give this a try and just jump right into it. Hey, how's it going, Dork Throne? If that is the right way to pronounce that. Yeah, I had like kind of a surprise stream today. I was supposed to work, but there was a miscommunication with because there was a government sh the government was delayed today, so I made it so that I could play some Death Shadow because the work didn't end up happening. So I guess it's good and bad. All right, let's get this over here. Yeah, so this is like what we got here so far. I like the third battle rage. I think you just need it, especially if humans is going to be that good. Um, got other counter spells, brutalities. I think you need the lingering souls. I would love to play this deck without lingering souls, but I just you just can't beat the decks that you want to beat the grindy decks without it. Manamorpho Shadow. That's what we're starting with today. Here's another thirteen. I think the Snapcaster is too cute. I think it's your best option if you're playing four colors, but this hand is pretty gross. Like, I'm just going to play dude after dude after dude, but like I can't play either of these shadows, so I'm going to ship this. Alright, this hand's much better. Uh, here's my lady. Put her on top. So now we're just playing like a Jun game, which is kind of cool. I do love to play a Jun game from time to time. Start with this. All right. Well, this is annoying. So my Tarmogoy is going to get pathed. I'm tempted to go take this bird. Next turn, take this voice. Then play my Liliana. And not play the Goyf yet. I'll probably have to discard whatever I draw. Which would suck if that was good. But this voice is going to kind of like invalidate my Liliana. This is a Botanical Sanctum, which is nice to see. So this is the retreat deck, not just the value town one. So I think it's good to take Bird. Next turn, take Voice. My third turn, play Liliana, tick it up. They probably get rid of Path, unless they draw some good cards. I think I'm going to take Bird. Yeah. Interesting take. I could have seen people wanted to take... I could see taking everything from that hand except the knight. <laughs> yeah, I think the Snapcaster is too cute. I think that you... It's just not what you need, not what you want in these Traverse decks. You want to play to the board. It's not nearly as good as a grindy matchup as Snapcaster Mage is. I just plays the planes. Alright, so let's check out... What he's got going on here. So I'm going to take the voice. Unless my opponent's got like a company. No, they, they drew a land, which is sweet. Play this, and then pass. Probably get Breeding Pool tapped. I don't think we need to go too... Go too hard on our life here. Do draw, two drop. That wouldn't be bad. That's kind of annoying. 
Because like, I, I kind of have to edict that. So we know my opponent's hand. I'm probably going to edict that so that if my opponent then plays the Knight of the Reliquary, get free the pool. My opponent plays the Knight. That was unfortunate. The problem is, this is going to trade no matter what with this Noble Hierarch, this Edict. And if I wait a turn, they can play it and have Path to Exile up. So I'm going to go fetch an Overgrown Tomb. Doing this just so that we're at 12. Like, it's effectively the same thing, but we're at... Because I'm probably going to end up discarding this Overgrown Tomb next turn. If I do. So that's a pretty good draw for my opponent. Probably the only thing that would have been worse than that would have been, like, a Voice... So it does suck to edict this, but like, it is what it is. Sometimes you just gotta. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. God, it's been a while. I've really been kind of disappointed with like my stream in the current um the gets through. Like I've been because I've been working so much. I just haven't been able to put together a consistent stream in the last like three weeks, which sucks. I missed my stream on Sunday because like, I went to go see my brother because we're getting a dog. So I figured that I would see my brother before we got the dog because that would just take away from... Um, just wouldn't be, I'm not going to be able to try out, take the dog to Philadelphia. What is he going to do here? Okay, plays the canopy. Plays the knight. Okay, so we knight. All right, that's pretty good. So let's go. This. Oh, that scavenging is bad. Okay, so if I take path, no matter what, my opponent's going to end up because they can play this scavenging ooze and they can eat. Can they shrink my Tarmogoyf to make it so the knight is larger than it? They can. So. I might as well. Yeah, I might as well just take away their threat. They're going to be able to answer my Tarm. Like if I go here, this becomes a four. Three, it becomes three power. Maybe four. They can shrink my Tarmogoyf, which sucks. So I'd have to chump block this. And then hope to draw a removal spell to wipe the board. I think I'm going to take this scavenging use because it's just like really dangerous the longer this game goes. That sucks. Then I'm just going to play this Goyf, get the land out of their hand. Which getting their land isn't trivial. Like, they they are a little constrained on mana. Um, it grows their it grows their dew their night. But at least we get a land out of this. So like, even if we get to a point in this game where we have to hard cast a street wave again. Tough spot because this thing gets pathed. Yeah. They eat our Liliana. The Noble Hierarch is what busted us up here. We could have made it without the Hierarch, but... Manamorphose into... Okay. It's going to make things a little difficult for our opponent. Manamorphose into Traverse would be sweet. Because Manamorphose, that's another kind of cool thing about Manamorphose that I didn't realize until I started playing with this deck, is that if you're not playing Tarfire, sometimes it can be difficult to get an instant into the graveyard, unless you're, if you're, especially if your opponent's not playing creatures out. So I really like that the Manamorphose you can just cast to get an instant in your graveyard in order to like help fuel Delirium. T Township's going to be annoying. You gonna attack me? Nah. I 
All right, we'll check out their top card. We're going to do this now because it could be a, it's a retreat. That's not good. Because the retreat taps... If he has, like, retreat fetch land, we're in a lot of trouble. Oh, they shuffled away. Okay. I wonder what they're getting here, the planes. They're probably just upgrading it to, like, a green, blue, a green white land. Let's say a company. God, if they drew a company... If they drew a company, they should have main phased it. Okay. Whew. All right. Bobble into bobble. That's what I'm talking about. Still can't really attack. I would have liked that Coral Arm, actually, I think. This matchup's gonna get a little harder for me because of how I built the deck here. I don't have a lot, I don't have any sweepers because I hate like sweepers plus lingering souls. And I have a hard time finding space for the jewel ghost quarter. So now I'm gonna start town shipping. Alright, that's a wicked draw. Um let's get this off the battlefield. But I, I added a third Battle Rage. So the third Battle Rage should, should do all right. I want to make sure the Stream Deckers are online with this deck. No. Where is it? They didn't upload. That's dumb. All right, let me upload these decks. My upload. Oh, man, they drew a company. Well, I guess maybe they wouldn't want to get rid of anything. But yeah, they definitely, I'm not going to put them on a company because it really wouldn't make sense for them to have a collected company. Because it just, it doesn't make any sense. I got that figured out now. Okay. So I'm going to attack, leave this last card in here. Because if you had a company, you should accompany it on your main phase so that I couldn't go stub into something. Or, like, way to hurt myself into Stubborn Denial. They also were probably doing that to activate Township. Alright, here comes the... Counter. Oh, I like, drew a company. Drawing company, that's gross. And we drew a land. Jeez. We are in trouble. worse it could have been better but that definitely could have been worse so we got what well, we got a bunch we have three fatal pushes and two abrupt decays to deal with this thing all right so let's go like this probably want we don't want to be red probably just want green black Gosh, that was unfortunate. Well, we just gotta pass. Oh man, that sucks. It's hard to win these, like... It is hard to win, because what are we? We're 41, 41 cards through the deck. One, two... Yeah, we've drawn a lot of lands. We're just gonna make this difficult, but... That is... It is what it is sometimes. If we find an answer this night, we're in business. Because you can't race the death you can't race Death Shadow with this. It sucked the Manamorphos didn't 
like it didn't do anything that's kind of through variance though like it just it was a free card essentially even free when they re- returned the mana so I think it's hard to evaluate it there where metamorphos is sweet is when you have three card types like that's that's bad too yeah we're gonna s- probably scoop this one up pretty soon All right, well, we're not ca- they're not casters. We're looking for Teamer Battle Rage. We got Watery Grave. And that's the last. Okay, so I think we're going to be able to hold him off one more. I guess not, actually. He can just go, like, animate his knight. He actually can just ghost quarter himself and kill me, but that's going to be, that's pretty ballsy for him to do, so I guess, actually, no, they can go get a land, yeah, we're, we're good. They can just get a land, put the townships on. Alright. Here's the Traverse. Okay. So, we want Lingering Souls. I think I want Hostage Taker, because they don't have a lot of removal. Um, I kind of want my Stubs, and I like Brutalities. I don't know if all these cards are going to be great or not. And obviously the other Battle Rage. Not a lot of cards to ring in, so we'll have to see what we want to do here. Um, I don't really like Inquisition a lot on the draw, on the play in this matchup, especially considering um, I got the Brutalities here. I might bring them back in on the draw when Liliana's not as great. So I don't really want these. I don't probably don't need all the stubs. We're just going to need one stub in order to win this game, really. And then the Hostage Shaker might be a little slow. Maybe we don't want to play that kind of game. I want to keep my removal. Sideboarding with these Manamorphoses makes everything a little bit difficult because you kind of have like a... You don't really want to take these out of your deck. So that just makes it kind of like... It's kind of like the free engine. I mean, obviously you'll take Street Wraith out against aggressive decks, but... Cards I definitely want. I want this and this. I can see boarding out more discard. And then, I don't really know if the pulse is worth it or not, if the pulse is just too clunky. I could board out all of my Inquisitions, and then look to bring in, like, two more and switch these with Liliana the Veils in the draw. Just to have a little bit more interaction. I'm going to give this a whirl. I don't really know how to sideboard. I don't know how these metamorphoses affect the sideboarding, which makes this a little difficult. All right, we'll keep this. This is good, not great, but we're halfway to Delirium with what we just got. We're three quarters of the way to Delirium, and we get a double redraw. I would not keep this hand if I was on the draw. This hand's not good enough on the draw. All right, well, at least we get redraws for days. So let's check out what's going on. All right, so they're drawing a flooded strand. Gross. Probably just going to take Noble Hire. That sucks when they keep the old one-landers and they got another land on top, but... We'll keep this. You're just gonna slow them down. See what they draw. All right, that push is nice. It's at least a way to interact. Well, the winds are easy up. All right, let's see what. I, I, I doubt we'll be able to. Add, they'll actually draw this, but let's hope they don't draw it. All right, let's draw two cards here. Bobble into Death Shadow. Okay. Alright, so we're just going to play this, and then pass, or then see if they crack this in their end step. The scavenging is probably isn't going to be there. Or at least I hope that they get rid of this. If we can get a shadow up to four power, then we'll be okay, because we'll be able to, you know, the reflector mage is kind of annoying. I really, I think I'm just gonna do this now to hope that they 
get rid of this. Like, I really hope they don't draw that card. God damn it. I was hoping they were trying to play bobble games with me. Like, I hope they're like, I didn't want to hide the information from him. Because I would rather my opponent have a random card than have this scavenging use. But this, let's just use our mana this turn. So we have lined up. We've got this for the ooze, this for the knight. We don't have an answer to this tireless tracker, which is bad. But this, if we can get this tireless tracker off, they're so land light. That if we, and if we find a discard spell or find... We already have one of our three thoughts he's left because we boarded out all of our Inquisitions. Mm -hmm. Okay. So there's the ooze. This gives us Delirium. Draw two. Okay, Rage is good. Traverse. So Traverse goes and gets me... a white land. Or a blue land. But then I can't cast... I think I gotta go Traverse for a blue land and then pass look to pulse this night then hopefully we find a way hopefully we draw no they miss the land drops okay I'm gonna leave this uncracked all right that's pretty much perfect actually Because that's going to turn on Ferocious, too. I think I'm going to get Breeding Pool, because I like I don't want to go too, too low against a deck this aggressive. Yeah, we're just going to let this Reflective Rage come down here. I'm going to go do this now. I don't really want to play games. This Reflective Rage is going to be annoying, but they don't have... A lot going on like the night slow the trackers are slow like if we can hit a team or battle rage that if we hit another land we can just battle rage and kill them so we have a lot of draws here we've got we have like a fetch land or a traverse and then we have a couple redraws or metamorphos which would be kind of cool all right it's not one of the redraws but now i'm pretty confident as long as my opponent doesn't go like running paths we're in good shape here Surprise! I'm surprised they took that. They're just not casting this path. So we need Manamorphose or a Red Land or a Traverse. All right, that's not bad. It's like the next best draw, probably. I'm gonna stub this path. Wow, they're just gonna continue to take this. They have a path to exile. That seems just crazy. This is nice because we even have a lethal attack. If we can find a um, a red land, we have a lethal attack through the Reflector Mage. Okay. All right, I'm gonna play this out. They're going to get to path my shadow, but I can play um, I can play the Tarmogoyf next turn, and then have the dispel, and then have stubborn denial up. Though they could, they could just mm, maybe that was wrong because they hit a land here. We could be kind of in a little bit of trouble. But if they hit a land, I'll just pulse the thing and tick up and ditch a. Rage, play Shadow next turn. Okay, so we'll ditch a team or battle rage. They probably won't play around the next one because of this. So now they have to put now they have to create two blockers. 
They can ghost quarter me, which is, you know, fine, but they ghost quarter me, I'm sure that turns off some of their outs. So I'd assume their hands like a bunch of companies and um, three drops. Yeah, see, they, they need this. You gotta put two block. You gotta put three blockers down, two on board, which is gonna be pretty difficult to do with one colorless land. All right. The sad part of the five color shadow deck. So you gotta go like bird, bird. Or they have another path to exile, which could be legit. All right. So they have tracker, knight, three unknowns. All right, we're going to start by going up. The, I'm just going to discard the team or battle rage. We don't need this. We're not going to need this to win. We might need the pulse. And we're just going to slam another goyf. Then pass. Now we can. Now our Liliana survives through an edict. So and then again, we have three. They have to put. They have to put three blockers in here, or they have to deal with the Goyf, which would be their fourth path to exile. No, there was a land. It was the wrong land, but it was a land to cast Pulse. Okay, so on the draw, I'm going to ditch these veils and I'm going to bring in two more discard spells. I have one three drop in my deck. I wonder if I can cut a land. Like 16 seems pretty aggressive, but we're all one and two drops except for this Maelstrom Pulse. So I wonder if I can ditch a land for this Inquisition. I think I'm going to. If that's right or not, I have no idea, but, you know, I just want to try to see if I can, how far I can stretch this. Like, how good are these three Manamorphoses? Likely, if I were to play this deck, I would only play two, but I, I wanted to put a third one in because I wanted to draw it. I wanted to see what it was like. And with only one spell in our deck that costs three, we're all one and two, I think that we might be able to give away with 16 lands. Especially because we're on the draw. So, again, we've got 15 lands left in our deck. We have two looks at it. Uh, we have two looks at 15. A traverse is 19. We've got three more of these, which is 22. 22, right? Yeah. And then a bobble. Four bobbles, which is 26 with the redraw. So we basically have 26 chances out of 53 cards, and we get two looks at it. 23 except 26 acceptable chances out of 53 cards and two chances. So I'm gonna keep it. This is really soft to a turn one mana dork. But we got battle rage, which is good, and stub to hopefully catch us up. And we can interact. So we're gonna we're gonna fetch before. Okay, so that's, that's not bad. If we're not gonna hit a land. All right. Um, so no matter what, I'm going to cast Inquisition. So let's bobble our opponent. Company on top. So if we get another land, this brutality is going to be insane. We do have Delirium on one, so our land can do any, everything for us. He's already got. He's got a company too. Okay. So I gotta take this spell queller because the turn to why not play Noble Hierarch? Okay. 
They're going to get to resolve a company, I assume, unless I hold up to try to stub the first one and then brutality the second one. Okay, so we missed there. What we really want is if we hit a land here, there's the planes. Okay. So how do I get my opponent to mess up here? Because they're going to accompany me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to thought seize a company away. I'm going to hold this verdant catacombs and I'm going to hope that my opponent doesn't play around stubborn denial. <laughs> Tough spot, but Hopefully these five sixes will be able to help us out. All right, they are going to play around it. Which sucks. Well, maybe they'll... Blood crit? Play the big old, big old goif. Come on. Yeah, I see they're going for it. Which is good. At least they're doing it in response, so I, don't, I can't get Reflector Mage. And then we have, at least we have another Tarmogoyf to follow up with, and we have a stub to defend this Tarmogoyf. Which is good. The hit just kind of some crap, even though this is a combo. <clears throat> okay. This is going to be a tough one to win. This is gonna, We're going to need a Death Shadow pretty quickly. We have another tracker. So he goes and gets two clues. So we're going to fetch, probably more than likely fetch a tapped breeding pool. But we're in a, we're in a lot of trouble. And this is part of the, what I made with this build here. Like I didn't, I didn't board any Manomorpha. I didn't board any sweepers because I really don't like the sweepers plus lingering souls plan. Always yield to the tracker. They hit a reflector mage too. All right, yeah, that's game. That's gross. That's gross. All right, tough way to start, but that's why there's five matches in a league. And we got punished there for not having, um, just for not having a, a sweeper, you know, like not, no radiant flames or anything like that, which I think is the best sweeper right now. If you're going to play a sweeper in death shadow decks, I think it should be radiant flames. I don't want, I don't think that we should, uh. How do I say this? Um, I don't think that we should. I don't think you should play Kozlex Return. I think it, I think Radiant Flames is where you want to be. Hang on one second. Uh, 
Uh, this hand's pretty good. This hand is pretty good. We're going to be able to, like, hopefully bobble into some sort of interaction. Like, I would love to see a discard spell. Because a discard spell is a turn one delirium. If we get a stubborn denial or something, then that's also a turn one delirium. So, we'll be able to play the fetch land bobble trick. Which, you should be playing bobble and street wraith in all of your shadow decks. It doesn't matter. We're going to keep that. But I don't think I'm going to cycle right now. You should be playing Bobble in all of your Death Shadow decks. Like, Bobble is sweet. It is a good magic card because it's free. Like, that's why it's good. Looks like we're playing against Jerry Thompson's deck. Oh, nope. We're not. Um, we're going to cycle this just to figure out what we should do. Okay. I'm going to get this land tapped because this thing can smack me. I might actually just get a tap land here. And then get another land and just abrupt decay this. And then look to Liliana, something that's like, hopefully we have to keep our land. Um, this one gets Breeding Pool, so we can go Traverse Goyf. I think this deck's very good, if you're feeling it. Alright, so that's good. That means that even through, and we can also like stub a Burning Inquiry if we have to. And then Liliana this. I'm going to be pretty aggressive with a Stubborn Denial. I like being aggressive with Denials, especially when you don't have Delirium. Yeah, like, we're going we're gonna to get rid of this. And then I'm just going to Edict this Flame Blade Adept. And then we should be in good shape. This deck has some amazing draws, though. Like, if this deck's on the play, it just does some really busted up stuff. That's nice. We're going to be able to go double Tarmor Wave next turn. I should have played my other land. Should have saved myself the damn. Actually, no, I shouldn't have because it's better to get two green lands in play in case my opponent lands another one of these. I played with this deck a little while ago. Um, and I really... I was impressed. Like... It's got, like, it's nut draws are really difficult to interact with. I I was, I, I'm a fan of this deck. I think that it's a great, like, what do we got? We gotta get, bolt my Liliana. All right. But it's fragile. All right. I'm gonna leave that Street Wraith because I'm, I'm basically playing two Tarmac Lives no matter what. And I don't think it's worth taking two life. Here, like I'm okay at this point with two Tarmogoyks in play. I'm okay discarding the Street Wraith like a Burning Inquiry. This deck was my when I played the first league through with this. This deck was my only loss. What do we got here? Just fetch main phase, do nothing. We're getting, we getting nasty. We getting nasty with a Germasty. What are we doing? We well, did that in the wrong order. Oh, there he is. All right. Well, Angler is still like I'm, my my Goyfs are still larger than the Angler. Yeah, they definitely should have done this in a different way because then it had the Blood Gas in play. Oh, they needed the Blood Gas in order to okay. If I attack for 10, fetch shock, then I kind of have to block because I could have another lightning bolt. Because if I attack for 10, then my opponent has to block next turn because this street wraith is unblockable. I go to 6, I can attack with one Tarmogoyf, hold back, block this, 14... And they're not dead on the crackback. Alternatively, I could just attack with one Goyf, hide behind this Goyf. The next turn, we have 14, then just 8-8 eight, eight over two turns and kill them. 
because they don't have like any velocity going right now and we even out race so we would go to six 14 four I guess Flame Wake Phoenix kind of messes us up. I guess we can just attack with both and then block this Gurmag Angler if they get frisky with it. And I don't re I'm not really into cycling yet because I don't have a lot of draws that really... Maybe cycling it's okay. It costs $12 to play a league there at Jopa unless you're doing, you know... And they, they give you... You have the ability to go infinite on Moto. I kind of want to cycle. It's either cycle this and attack with one Goyf, or play this, attack with two Goyf. What do I want to draw? I don't want to draw Fatal Push, Manamorphosis, whatever, discard spell is bad, and we have a lot of discard spells left in our deck. I think just having a 3-4 on the battlefield is better than... I guess I should have done this all differently. Play ourselves a true name nemesis. Okay. Um, I like Maelstrom Pulse, and I like Lingering Souls in this matchup because it's it plays well through uh, whatever it is, Burning Inquiry. Um, I don't like any of my blue spells. I don't think, especially when I'm on the draw, I might want to like stub something when I'm on the play. But it's three, four, five converted mana cost. They're gonna have Blood Moon after sideboard, so I should leave in my decays. I don't really like. seconds um I want to shave on some of my like little removal here maybe Liliana actually no I'm gonna cut my Liliana's because they have blood gassed and that shit's always embarrassing I think I'll cut an inquisition on the draw bring it back in on the play I might side my blue cards back in on the play because it's just gonna be that good to stub one of those dumb um, other guys what we're gonna do not uh, not entirely sure again like i haven't played a lot with this deck so i don't know like the sideboarding definitely it makes it harder when you've got the uh whatever they are it's more difficult to sideboard when you've got the manamorphose i'm gonna keep this we have a second land if we need it and we're three quarters away delirium and at least i can deal with a hollowed one Take a million damage, do it, and God only knows where our hand's gonna be. Yeah, dude. I think my hand got better. No, now it got worse. That hollow one is scary. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so we can go get a death shadow next turn. Which I'm all about. So if I take I'm gonna take at least four, six, ten. So we're going to take 10 damage no matter what, minimum. Which means my Death Shadow isn't larger than this Hollowed One. They didn't discard anything of super relevance. So they could have like a Flame Wake Phoenix, which would suck. I think I'm going to go Overgrown Tomb, Inquisition. Cycle this next turn. No, we don't have... Yeah, no, we'll still have Delirium. Okay, so let's go get an Overgrown Tomb, Inquisition then.
All right, we're going to ditch that BGH while we can. So we got an Angler and a Flame Wake Phoenix. The Phoenix is going to be annoying. They're going to be able to play the Angler this turn. Oh, nasty, you're nasty. Okay, that's not bad. Cycle. I think I've got to make my shadow larger than one of these so that I can block it. If they try to suicide it and then kill me with a flame wake, then I can like pulse the other one. This is going to get rough though, for sure. So let, I think I'm going to eight no matter what here, which means I can block, I can eat this or trade here. What land do I want to fetch? I'm going to cycle this beforehand. Because if I draw a team or battle rage, I want red. If I draw lingering souls, then I want white. And I think it's not worth... Might as well do it now. Alright, let's take a look at the top of their deck. They have one unknown card. Faithless Looting. I'm going to go get a white land because we have four lingering souls versus only one rage. Did I not side in my other rage? Well, that was a pun. I thought I did, but apparently I didn't. So we're going to go get Godless Shrine and then Traverse for our homeboy. Then next time we can Traverse for another homeboy. Pass. Got turn two, we're already down to eight. Notice that looting's no longer on top of their deck. We draw off the bubble, show me a lingering souls. Alright, metamorphosis isn't bad. Uh I got a I got an IQ tomorrow on on Sunday, excuse me, that I'm gonna be playing in. I'm gonna hit some of the SCGs here, but Work has just been off, off the chart here. They just madnessed a big game hunter, and that kills me. Oh, that was gross. Okay, so now do we want our blue spells back in, back when we're on the play? And I think the answer is yes, because I think we want to be able to, like. On turn one, stub one of their stupid, uh, one of their stupid, whatever it is, spells. The draw and discard one. I don't want all of them. I actually want my battle rage. So I'm actually going to ditch one more Inquisition. No, I'm going to ditch. Yeah, I'm going to ditch an Inquisition. I still have six. So I have nine ways to deal with a turn one, uh, whatever it is, burning inquiry. Got it. So I think this is what we're going to do here. All right, we're going to lead off. Got his hand sick. Good old seven speller. All right, this is good. We're gonna, we don't care what's on top. We're going to thought seize no matter what. Oh, they mulligan as well. Well, we're gonna, yeah, it doesn't matter. Like, we're just gonna go get Overgrown Tomb and Inquisition them, put this on top to make them think. Oh, wait, they have like a ley line or are they just tanking? Hopefully, they're not tanking. Hopefully, they don't have a ley line. Ley line would suck. Ley line would be really bad out of their deck, so, you know, it's probably overthinking it, but. Because we got a tarm away, if we're gonna protect our life total a little bit. All right, faithless looting, flame blade adept. We want to take the adept, and then thought sees the angler next turn. 
and then just hope that he doesn't like you'd have to go looting into another way to discard in order to play a hollowed one so like you'd have to have one hell of a looting into a discard here Okay, so we ditched Bloodstained Mire, Blood Crypt, so he's just got Angler and three unknowns. All right, let's traverse for our swap. Got our swap. And then get rid of that Angler. It was kind of a rough looting. I wonder what he kept on top. He must have kept a looting on top. Okay. We have three cards. Plays a land. Got two cards, and we got a Tarmogoyf. Oh, how do you get the hollow? Oh, it's a Goblin Lore. No, how do you get the hollow? Oh, he tapped one. Okay, got it. Got it. All right, that's gonna be hard to deal with because it's just bigger than my Goyf at this point. I mean, we can battle rage and block it, but that doesn't sound super appealing. Okay, so he kept his mountain. Alright, well, we're not blocking yet. We might be blocking soon. If I can get. I'm gonna target. I'm gonna throw this stubborn denial at anything, because it's gonna mean that our Tarmal Wave's large enough to get rid of this. Uh, hollowed one, or at least block it. So the next chance I get to use this, I use any of my instants I'm going to. She doesn't give me the chance to. Metamorphose. So I actually can thought seize, hold priority, stub my thought seize, pay for it, and then this is larger. I'm gonna go to five. Yeah, I think that's what I'm gonna do. So let's go. Thoughtsies. I want you to pay for this. Okay, so now our goy's bigger. Oh, that's so bad. I guess I've got to take Burning Inquiry. My broken decay doesn't kill this thing there, Jace. So we gotta take Burning Inquiry. What do you mean, Battle Rage was the play? So I did get rid of this mountain. So you have Goblin Lore, Big Game Hunter. Right, I can't gas. I can't cast it, right? All right, so now they're looking for help. They didn't get rid of the Big Game Hunter, which isn't good. If they madness the big game hunter, I can decay my own Tarmogoyf to get rid of this, because it's not, it's not a May. All right, that was a pretty good draw. But now, so I attack. I attack, they go to 12, play Death Shadow. If they can get this big game hunter into play, then I, the Tarmogoyf still checks this. I go to one, but if they don't play this, then they're chum blocking. So I think I've just got to press the advantage. Because if they get this big game hunter into play, I'm in a lot of trouble. And if they miss and I draw a red land, I'm going to kill them. No, so there comes the big game hunter. 
That's all right. I mean, we still have our tongue bar can still block this. We're gonna get rid of this because we we got to. pass and we'll just hold up here we're dead to a lot of stuff lightning bolt flame wake phoenix there's a lot of things that kill us here blood gas is one of them yeah that sucks and maybe it was the mistake that I made. I guess I didn't have the opportunity to fetch for another land here. So I couldn't have gotten the team or battle rage in. And if they miss on a land there, then we're in pretty good shape. If they miss on a land, then they have to chump block with their hollowed one. But it just didn't work out. Two close matches. Two close matches. We just ended up being on the wrong side of it. So, you say saying play the shadow is horrible. If I don't play the shadow, then I give them more draw steps, right? If I do play the shadow and they miss, they then have to chump block. They go to seven. Then if they play... They go to chump block, they go to seven. Then if they find a land, they kill my whatever it is my shadow then I attack again and I'm at I'm still at five I attack again I decay their thing I attack them again and go to three so they miss a land drop I didn't know the opponent's hand they just I knew they had the big game hunter yeah but yeah they're not gonna make that play I can't like I wouldn't make that play if I was my opponent they've been sitting on two mana the entire game and they see they know I have a rub decay like there's one there there's something that you can do when it comes to hoping your opponent makes a mistake when you don't have any other plays like my collected company was in the games that I just played against them but they're not going to make that play they're going to sit there and like they're going to just keep dirtling through their deck because they had goblin lore in there and they had like more looks at it i think that's like the, I'm going for it, you know, like it's I need to press the advantage before they get to look through because they can find Bolt, they can find Flame Wake Phoenix they have a lot of draws that kill me and that's part of playing against that deck, that deck um this hand's weak to a mana dork but we're going to keep it This uh, the, playing against that deck, I should turn off my auto yields, playing against humans, okay playing against that deck is how do I say it it's they like it's it's all it's all random, you know. Like they have a lot of really, they have a lot of good draws, or they have a lot of lower draws, you know. Like I, I, that's, I don't know how to communicate that. Let me think. There's a lot of randomness to that deck, and I went for the play that I thought would end the game quicker for me. Which I didn't want to play a longer game against that deck because they have a lot of reach. Okay, so that's a, not a bad draw because I do want to get a green land with this. But I think for now we're going to just protect our life total. Yeah, I think I think when you're playing Death Shadow, or at least this Traverse kind of Death Shadow, all right, I have to get this. I have to get this Dahlia off the board. When you're playing Traverse Death Shadow, I think that you should take the most aggressive line. A not 90% of the time, but like when in doubt, you should just be more aggressive. I think they should have done this differently. I think it would be better to have two counters on these. Okay, so I can take the Reflector Mage, which they'll probably be alright with, and then I'll take one to, or I can just decay this thing. Have the Reflector Mage in play. 
I'm going to need a Death Shadow pretty quick. I'm going to take... I'm going to decay this Thalia's Lieutenant because it's going to allow me to traverse... have Delirium next turn, so if I can traverse for a Death Shadow, if I need to, and I can Thought Seize, Traverse, and... Uh, how do I say this? How do I say it? I can Thought Seize, Traverse, and play Death Shadow on the same turn. And this theoretically, like, I take three points to do that, but it's probably going to save me points also. All right, so they drew a champion. Okay, so they have Thalia. They need a Death Shadow. Yeah, now I'm dead. And that's just like, I got humans. And I think that this version is a little weaker against the human deck because I don't play sweepers. Why not decay in combat? It probably was right for decay to decay it in combat, to tell you the truth. Like, I was just talking and moved through it. Yeah, no, that was that was completely right, Ash, Ashoth. I was just, like, talking through it, and it went over my head. So I'm going to keep these two Lilianas in on the play. I like this. I like this. These Metamorphos seem kind of gross against Thalia. The more I think about this. So maybe I want to cut these. But then uh, my deck's also kind of expensive. Because what would I want to bring in? Like Collective Brutalities? And then like, I kind of want this Hostage Taker maybe? Maybe I want to shave on these and bring in two Brutalities. Yeah, no, you were 100% right. I was just talking through the line. And they just did it. Didn't sit there and wait. Been like, okay, let them do their thing. I don't really want Lingering Souls. Lingering Souls can buy me time to battle rage them. But Lingering Souls is really bad against Dahlia. I think we're just going to go like this. The Hostage Taker is like a maybe. Just because it's nice to be able to like... Because sometimes these games against human feel, humans feel just like souped up games of limited. Where if you can take a creature and then have another creature, it's worth it. So maybe I want that over the Manamorphos. And then I just need to mind my hands. You know, like, pay attention. Like, okay, I need to go get a land. I need to play in, like, a way. Because, yeah, if I'm thinking... The more I think about it here, the more I'm like, God, these Manamorphos are just terrible against Thalia. Which definitely makes me a little more hesitant to play them. But I assume there'll be a lot of humans at the IQ this weekend, just because, like, it's... It's the best vile company or slash company deck. Like if, if you want to play it with a company, it's like the pro tour thing you do. Hashtag just stream things. Yeah. Um, I'd say it's pretty good. Yeah, and I'll and I need to work on that with my sideboard because I don't want. I need to figure out plans to where like I don't want to bring in lingering souls and sweepers in the same time. So maybe I need to build my sideboard and such where I want Lingering Souls against this deck. Because, like, having Souls and isn't isn't really great, I think. I'm going to keep my hand. My hand's pretty good. So I'm going to lead on a discard spell. Probably let a one-drop land. And then hopefully they have, like, a dismember. I can do something with this. This hostage taker is getting binned to this brutality. And, like... And the five, if I play the five, if I play the five color deck without Metamorphos, I have a couple more sideboard slots, I think. Because I'll play like one more spot removal spell, uh, one more land, 
and then one more stub, probably. I want to get blood crypt because this can get breeding pool. Maybe I should just ignore the breed the black source. Which I'll, I'll probably just ignore the blue source really because this is the only blue card in my deck and it's not really going to do very much right now. Okay. Wow, those malcontents are kind of scary. So is the meddling mage. I'm going to leave the noble because it's going to let me use my mana effectively next turn. And I think that this meddling mage is going to name Fatal Push. This deals with this. I think I'm just going to take the noble. No, I'm not going to take the noble. That's gross. No, I think you can't afford to play this deck without white in it. I think, like, you just need lingering souls to keep up with the fair decks. I'm going to take Thalia's Lieutenant because he's not going to Meddling Mage Maelstrom Pulse. And the Lieutenant is, like, a bigger threat the longer the game goes. I've tried I've tried so long to play it without blue. To play to play this five, this Traverse Death Shadow deck without uh, blue cards. Or without white cards, excuse me. And it's just so difficult. That's what he drew. So I'm glad we know about that. Well, then you're in a different deck. Like, you're you're into the Grixis deck, which is a better deck against Fair decks than the Jun Shadow deck. All right, that's pretty great. So, play this. I might as well go like this, and then just Brutality this thing. Because we... And not Escalate it, because we might find another land for this Hostage Taker, which would be sweet. Yeah, I don't think playing four color, no white. Yeah, I think that's just like a strictly worse version of the deck. Alright, so we're gonna get to edict this. We're in good shape this game. We could struggle against like a Mantis Rider. Do I want to get a basic? No, I want to be able to play my Death Shadow. Does this thing deal... Oh, so this thing does... This thing will just one for one with my Veil. Which kind of sucks. But, it is it is where we are. Like, at least they're casting this to deal with Liliana, and they're not casting this to deal like 8 points of damage to me. And they might play the other one, which means I'll be able to pulse him. You want to play Grixis? Okay, yeah. Yeah, you could... And again, that's... So they drew that, so they still have the canopy. And again, that's just a different deck, right? I really... That's a pretty good draw. So this doesn't deal damage to creatures, right? Okay, no. So let's go this... And I'm going to look if they, like, Reflector Mage me. That'll kind of suck, but I really want to push something on this turn. Souls is under... Souls is underwhelming at the Pro Tour because those people are smart enough to realize that Fair Decks suck. At an IQ, people are going to like to play their Jun. They're going to like to play their Abzan. They're going to like to play their Black Green. You know, they're going to like to play those decks. All right, that's not bad. So let's check out what's going on. Get that Mantis Rider out of my face, and we're just going to pass. Like, yeah, it's a very customizable deck. We're getting freebooted here. That's kind of annoying. Just hit this with the trigger on. So now the jig is up with the Maelstrom Pulse, so I'll probably just end up pulsing this. They played the Ziggurat. And I think you're just like, you're also just a significant, I still think that the Grixis Shadow deck is probably the best deck in the format. It is difficult to play.
I don't think you beat the rock deck with this because they play the Field of Ruins. They play Field of Ruins, excuse me. So what do I want to do? I kind of want to just pulse this and start attacking, which is more mana efficient. But like, if I hit, if I play this shadow, God, I can deal two damage to them if I take this. Should be kind of cool. Um, it's so mopey to pulse this when I know they have another one. But I kind of just want to be man efficient, and it lets me start getting in. If they play another one, it's going to make my shadows a little bit bigger. Like, this is pretty. This is pretty mopey, but sometimes life is mopey. Ooh, Reflector Mage. That is gross. There's the cavern. Human, human. So they don't have an illusion, but they can count tap this for an illusion. Ping. It's like a lieutenant. All right, so I think we go Fetch Shock, Hostage Taker this. I get another green black. Get this. And this is just fine. Like, like this just turns into a souped up game of limited. If only that shadow was a human. Twenty-two viewers, I appreciate everybody showing up and hanging out today. I hope everyone's having a good time. My day started really crappy, but all of a sudden it's really good. It was a good stream. Work has been off the charts lately. Dismembered my ooh. Dismembered this. What are they gonna do? They're gonna reflector mage this. Okay. So they're gonna deal two to me. So they're out. They're on empty. And that's a pretty good draw. So this probably just seals the game. Because now, even if they Manus Rider me, like, Manus Rider doesn't kill me. Um, because they would, uh, they'd attack, if they attack with Manus Rider, I just hostage take her one of their things, and they chump, they double chump. A Malcontent's pretty, there's Manus Rider, okay. Okay, so which one do I want? Probably will just don't want to take this malcontent. Don't want to take this reflector mage because they got a double chum. And then another mantis rider is the only thing that kills me. So I shouldn't take the mantis rider in case they find a way to kill my hostage taker. I think I'm just gonna take the reflector mage. I'm gonna get both of these cards in the graveyard and then just hope they don't peel on us. Which, if they peel on us, they peel on us. Like, I have peeled on a lot of people in my day. This is why I really like it. I think this is the premier Shadow 4 drop right now. Because, like, it's nice that it's great in fair matchups, and it's good in unfair. Like, the fact that this deals with Worm Coil Engine and Snaring Bridge, Cranial Plating, is also really nice. Now we're gonna try to lean the deck out a little here on the draw. I don't know what to bring in. I think my analysis of these Manamorphos is that they have just been a little, they, they've 
they haven't been bad to play with, and I understand why they're in the deck. Like, it's a great way to just turn on Delirium when your opponent's not playing creatures. But it's just caused me to, like, really mess up my sideboarding. I think. My sideboard feels... Because my, my main deck feels tighter. It, excuse me. It feels like I can't interchange cards. Like, his Lilianas are not very good on the draw. But is Lingering Souls any better? Destabilizes my mana base more. I don't think Lingering Souls is any better. The counter spells aren't good. Yeah, I think I think we're just gonna do it as is. And plus, these Lingering Souls are like incredibly embarrassing if my opponent has a Thalia. But, like, Liliana the Veil is so bad. I, mean, I think... Oh, man. Maybe I just board out my Hostage Takers. Maybe I just board these out. Board out a White Land and then just go like this on the draw. It's kind of gross no matter what, I think. Like, I don't really want these cards on the draw and I don't really want those cards on the draw. It's just kind of a bit of a coin flip about which ones suck more. And again, these could be like two Radiant Flames. Which is like, probably I'm going to be an adult and play Radiant Flames in my next league, and then just try to work it out. I'm going to have to retweak my sideboard before the next league. All right, I'm gonna just I'm gonna go like this because it might just buy me time to battle rage them. I don't have any idea if this is right or not, but it is what it is. <sighs> it's a pretty good hand. We're weak to a turn one mana dork. Like, I'd much rather see a champion than a mana dork, but you can't toss this hand back. All right, show me a fatal push. I think we just got to dismember that. So if I go blood crypt dismember, I want to go blood crypt fetch 11, I think. Because I want to get my red source. And then next turn I can go Inquisition, take the Reflector Mage, play Death Shadow, I'm at 11. Hope to Christ they don't play a Thalia. Because they, if they play Thalia, that's fine, as long as they don't have Reflector Mage as well. So I think we're going to fetch 15, 11, and we're just going to merc this thing. This is the kind of hand that, like, if you get a Battle Rage, you're you're really favored. If we don't find a Battle Rage, this is going to be pretty difficult. Okay, Thoughtseize. No. Nope. I also tend to like boarding out some discard. So maybe I should have left my Lilianas in and then kept my discard in. But when we move to 17 lands and you have an abundance of 3 drops, it, gets, it just gets sketchy. No Thalia. Okay, that's whatever. That value is fine. All right, let's see what they're drawing. We've actually got a decent shot. Cavern of Souls. All right, value is Lieutenant. Xanthrid Necromancer. Necromancer is really annoying. I think I've got to take the Necromancer and then just probably thought seize this Daredevil and then just try to deal with both of these lieutenants, which is going to be definitely easier or hard. Or it's going to be easier said than done. But this Necromancer, this Necromancer just provides an infinite chunk box, which like we're going to gain some card advantage here in a little bit because they're going to start having to like chump my shadow.
Oh, it was a dire flea daredevil? Oh, it was a dire flea. I thought it was the three drop. Oh my god, I just killed myself. Now they literally just cast this, dismember my death shadow, and then the game just over. I literally just saw the wrong three drop. Like, I, I saw red, and I didn't even, I thought it was the, uh, oh gosh. That's gross. We did not re we did not RTFC effectively. Now we're just dead. Like we can play this Goyf next turn, but it's not it's just not gonna matter. Which that's a rough setup anyways. Like if I'm gonna beat so if we can back up, I would take this Daredevil and then this Necromancer basically means we got Rage or Duh, Rage or Bust. If we draw a Death Shadow here, we could do okay. Because then we can go Thought Seize this and play a Death Shadow. Push isn't... Push makes us four, five. Push this. All right, we're still in it. But we're not... It's not good. Like, we're not in good shape. And this is, like, a little problem when you're doing, like, a testing process here. Is it, like... I'm more focused on what I'm doing with my deck because I know what this deck does. I, I like I obviously messed this up. You know, there's no way around that. Oh, Moto is a little laggy. I might restart Moto. If we lose this match, I'll probably jump into another league. Restart Moto. Let's go have another human. I have another human. So meddling Mage. So I push block, take four. I need to draw another Fatal Push. Well, no, they're going to name Fatal Push with this. Okay, so they named Death Shadow. Okay. We got to take this. So hopefully we draw Fatal Push. We go Push, Push. No, we're still dead. All right, I'm going to restart Moto. And that was all my fault. I think I had a chance if I had taken this. But... That was just like part of how our sideboards built. I just didn't have enough answers for this deck. Which is, you know, not good to do. All right, so let me switch over to this deck here. Okay, so I think this right here, this is what we're gonna run through next. We're gonna play five color without the, um, Without these, let's update with one of these. And here's our sideboard. I think maybe we should make these radiant flames. Like if we want to, if we want to start to put some respect to this deck, we should make both of these radiant flames. So let me toss my sponsor page up here. Return my order, and then I will be. Then we'll get the next order going here. Sorry about the, the wait here. We're just gonna jump back. I just gotta like message the bot. Let me stop recording.